Hi, Joe here from Show Speak Photography. I was just activating your webcam so I could see your smiling face here on YouTube. So hey, nice to see your smiling faces again here on YouTube. Hey, firmware 2.0 was released today for the Nikon Z9. Now, if you're waiting to install it via SnapBridge, you're gonna have to wait one more day for that. But if you did it through the memory card, it's available today. And one of the really cool features about it is pre-release capture. There's some um, changes to the focusing system as well, some new options for uh, the fo focus point zones, which are pretty neat. But I think that the coolest thing about it is the pre-release capture mode. So you do have to turn it on in the menus and there's a couple of gotchas to it. Not really gotchas per se, but just things that you need to, to understand. You always need to understand how your camera works so that you can utilize it the best way possible. So I'm gonna just show you some of those little items so you understand everything about this pre-release capture mode and what it does and what it can do. So it's only gonna take a couple of minutes. Let's dive into the menu and I'll show you where to turn it on. Okay, so we are here in the menu system of our Nikon Z9. You're gonna travel on down to the pencil over here, which is your custom settings menu. And then from there over to D, shooting and display. Click on that and then you're going to scroll on down until you see D4. Okay, so D4 says C30, C120 options. Now this is where you're gonna turn on your pre-release and your post-release uh, burst, okay? So when you scroll into this menu here, D4, pre-release burst is off by default. Click on it and you can set the amount of time all the way up to one full second before you press the shutter button. So what does that mean? It means the camera is going to capture frames one second before you press the shutter release button. Now, post release burst, that can be one second, two seconds, three seconds, or max. Max meaning it will capture until the buffer is written, but this does not mean it's capturing after you have released the shutter button. What it's doing essentially is it is just taking a burst until you release the button. So, or alternately you could set it to a timer, one second, two second, three second. Okay, so a few considerations when using the pre-release, post-release. Again, if you're using the post-release, this is just limiting the amount of time the camera is going to take pictures when you press down the shutter button. So if you set it to one second, no matter how long you hold the shutter button, it's only going to take one second worth of images. You set it to three seconds, it's gonna be three seconds and it's gonna stop. Okay, so that's what the post-release is doing and it's important to understand that. Okay, if you set it to max, it'll just take as many images as it can until the buffer fills up. Somewhere a little bit over four seconds, Nikon estimates. So that's how that's going to work for you. And again, it's gonna depend on the speed of the card that's in your camera as well. So the other thing is this is JPEG only, and you do have to have your camera in the continuous release mode which is up on that command dial on the top left side of your camera if you're looking at it from the back, okay? So that's important. Again, it's JPEG only. If you're shooting at 30 frames continuous, now this doesn't really have anything to do with the pre-release mode, but your shutter speed minimum will be 1 60th of a second. So if you set it to 1 30th of a second for some reason, and you go into the 30 frame per second mode, it's going to automatically raise your shutter speed to 1 60th. If you're shooting 120 frames per second, the minimum shutter speed is 1 125th of a second. So if you're shooting at an 80th of a second, you switch to that mode, you're going to go up to 1 125th of a second. So be sure to compensate by either changing your aperture and opening up your aperture wider or raise your ISO. Okay, so those are a couple of considerations. And aside from that, that's really all there is to it. So go out and enjoy using pre-release capture. All right, so I hope you found that video helpful. And if you did, please help me out by hitting like, subscribe, and of course, ring the bell so you get notified of future updates to this channel. It's the probably the best thing that you can do as a way of thanking me if something in this video did help you out. Um, just know I appreciate you guys out there. I appreciate everyone who watches these videos. And if you have any questions, feel free to drop a comment because I always do my best to answer almost all of the comments on this channel. So thanks again for watching 
and I'll see you again next time, YouTube. Bye-bye.